Have you been on a cruise? Where have you traveled to? Which parts of islands have you docked at? Who is working on the cruise ship? How are your experiences with local people? Do these questions resonate with you? Perhaps you've been on a cruise or you are planning to go on a cruise in the future. Our goal with this video is to get you to think critically about the impacts that you may have as a tourist and to decide whether or not you want to continue to take part in and support the cruise tourism industry. We cannot tell you how to be a mindful and conscious tourist, but we hope this video provides information and guidance on how to be an informed tourist. You will be one of more than 24 million people embarking on a cruise this year, which is 10 million more tourists than there were just 10 years ago. As a passenger from America, you'll be part of 80% of the cruise tourism market. The rest of the passengers will most likely be from Europe, making up 14% of the market. Studies have indicated that globally, tourism generates about 10% of the gross domestic product. Your cruise will most likely take you to the Caribbean, a region that makes up almost 50% of the global cruise market. Unlike the global scale, tourism occupies around 43% of the gross domestic product for the entire Caribbean region. Therefore, the Caribbean as a whole is extremely dependent on tourism. As many as 70 cruise passenger ships are at sea in the Caribbean at any given time, Cruising is booming, growing by upwards of 10% a year. If those numbers are from a study done in 2008, where does this mean we are now? To begin, let's define global environmental injustice. Environmental justice seeks to address the inequitable dumping of environmental and social burdens on marginalized communities who are not involved in the production or decision making of these harms. As a tourist, you have a responsibility to respectfully and mindfully understand your position of power in the larger context in which you are placed. Now that we've had some time to think through the general definitions of global environmental injustice, let's delve into answering these questions in the context of the cruise tourism industry. Huge multinational corporations are in charge of this industry. These corporations are Carnival Corporation, Royal Caribbean International, and Norwegian Cruise Lines. This is a manifestation of the dependency world systems theory, which describes the relationship and economic dependence between global south countries like Jamaica and the powerful global north nations like the western powers. This results in countries like Jamaica being economically dependent on the more powerful countries, while Jamaican people are also not playing a large role in the functioning of the cruise tourism industry. Despite the fact that these cruise ships are traveling throughout the Caribbean region, the most represented group of onboard employees is Filipino employees, by five to six times the amount from the next most represented groups. Cruise corporations recruit Filipinos specifically due to the stereotypes associated with Filipino seafarers, subservience, loyalty, adaptability, literacy, flexibility, and hardworking nature. Additionally, the Philippine government receives economic benefits from their citizens working in foreign positions in the cruise ship workforce. The multinational corporations with economic clout are the ones who benefit from exploiting Caribbean environments and people. The local people being excluded from benefiting from the industry are the exact people also being targeted for experiencing the adverse impacts of tourism. This is a clear sign of environmental racism, which is the targeting of marginalized communities for experiencing environmental pollution and being neglected from environmental protection regulations and enforcement. A theory of environmental justice that we'll introduce here is internal colonialism, which is the concept that within a society, a dominant group governs and dictates over a subordinate group based on a legacy of invasive and oppressive colonial powers. In this case, the dominant group is the cruise corporations that have control and disproportionate power over the Caribbean islands. We are using Jamaica as a case study in order to allow us to understand some of the environmental justice issues that occur on a smaller local scale as well as the regional and global scales. Jamaica is an interesting island to look at because it is a popular destination for cruises. It is also a nation that has been very deterministically stereotyped in the media as extremely relaxed and happy which makes tourists perceive it as an ideal destination in which they can escape from real life. As a tourist, you are contributing to the industry that comprises 25% of Jamaica's GDP. And as a cruise tourist, you are contributing to the 1,213.9% increase in cruise arrivals to Jamaica from 1970 to 2003. Your cruise will likely dock at Ocho Rios upon arriving in Jamaica, 
as this is the most active cruise port with more than 800,000 visitors reported annually. Or perhaps you are stopping at a newer port, like that in Falmouth. This port was created to host mega ships and is advertised to give tourists the genuine Jamaican experience. The reality is that Falmouth is actually just a manufactured, idealized version of the paradise that tourists are expecting. Other popular cruise destinations include Montego Bay and Port Antonio. As you can see from this map, the tourist destinations of Jamaica are concentrated and isolated to the northwest region of the island and are separated from other cities on the island by geographic barriers such as mountains and forests. So, on your cruise, it may seem like your entire world is confined to a single self-contained vessel. Actually, cruise ships are much more far-reaching than you may think. Let's begin by thinking about the environmental impacts that you'll be eliciting in the areas through which you travel. On average, a cruise ship carrying 300 passengers may generate about 25,000 gallons of toilet sewage or black water, and 143 gallons of sewage from other water facilities, otherwise known as gray water. Think washing your hands, showering, things along those lines, every single day. Cruise ships also generate hazardous waste, oily bilge water, and diesel emissions. These substances are often released into the oceans illegally, and there are very few regulations in place that can prevent this from happening. Cruise ships operate as mobile floating chunks of multinational capital, flying flags of convenience that protect them from international labor laws, environmental protection, and from territorially based states and regional regulation in the Caribbean. Besides the fact that cruise ships have a huge effect on the offshore ecosystems, they also bring a lot of traffic to Jamaica's coastal areas. Coral reef ecosystems are extremely vulnerable to issues such as pollution, development, and human activity, and it is clear that Jamaica's reefs are being heavily affected. Just imagine a cruise ship that carries hundreds of people arriving at a small island for just one day, and all of those people quickly going to the same beach and snorkeling in the same reefs. That type of tourism is not sustainable in any sense. For instance, between 1977 and 1993, Jamaica's live coral cover fell from 52% to 3%. One of the biggest ironies concerning degradation of the Caribbean, and specifically Jamaican environment, is the fact that the Caribbean is often advertised to tourists as a pristine natural setting with golden beaches, green trees, and bright blue waters. However, the cruises that are bringing the tourists to these destinations obviously lead to a huge amount of environmental degradation to the supposedly pristine coasts. Plus, there is a huge push for Caribbean towns to develop huge port facilities along coasts for cruise ships to dock at. How are Jamaican port towns supposed to make the choice between maintaining their coastal landscapes and developing their port facilities? How are they supposed to mitigate this when they are being pressured to do both by the tourism industry upon which they so heavily depend? While there are many environmental impacts of your tourism, you should also be aware of the social impacts of your cruise tourism. By going on a cruise, you are contributing to the heavy economic reliance of the cruise tourism industry in Jamaica, which inevitably leads to concerns of environmental and social justice. At your port stop, you should recognize that cruise tourism throughout the Caribbean commonly presents local communities in an idealized fashion by utilizing themes such as Pirates of the Caribbean and prevents tourists from traveling into the actual communities of the local residents, which promotes marginalization. Common Jamaican attitudes towards the tourism industry include feelings of alienation, fear of environmental concerns, a desire for greater involvement of small businesses in the industry, and improved efforts towards educating local people on the tourism industry, which reflect global environmental injustice concerns. If you take into account the many detrimental environmental and social impacts that tourism contributes to Jamaica, it seems that the most sensible solution would be to end the tourist industry in the region. However, the problem is that Jamaica and the wider Caribbean region is so economically dependent upon the industry that removing it would have even more of a detrimental impact than keeping it the way it currently is running. This plays into ideas of environmental blackmail, which means that the industry is extremely environmentally and socially damaging, yet to not take part in it would potentially cost Jamaican locals their livelihoods. In order to improve the conditions that result from the tourism industry, there needs to be a more cohesive and equitable collaboration between stakeholders. What could this collaboration look like? According to an anthropological study done on Jamaican perceptions and attitudes of the tourism industry, 
A recurring and crucial concept raised was the lack of adequate hospitality education available for the Jamaican people. The Jamaican participants raised this issue as a key problem of the tourism industry, but also as a key solution. This could allow for Jamaican locals to open small businesses, conceive of innovative tourism practices, and provide wider community involvement in the tourism sector. We hope this video has been informative for you in determining whether or not you want to continue to be an active participant in the cruise tourism industry. It is extremely important to think critically about the negative consequences of tourism, but also about the detriments in pulling out of the sector. Again, we can't tell you exactly how to be a mindful and conscious tourist, but we hope the information in this video will make you think twice the next time you decide to plan a cruise vacation.